Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Drew Cravello and Lee Eisenberg, creators of We Crashed on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, guys, I'm a huge fan of this show. I, I loved it so much. I know it's based on a podcast of the same name. I I love I, I love the, the way you adapted it. How Why did you feel like this was a great story to adapt as a narrative story, I guess? So uh, Wondery actually came to me. Um, I've been trying to find something to do with them for a few years, and uh, they came to me with the podcast before it had been released to the uh, public, which was incredibly exciting. <laughs> I've never had anyone do that to me before. Um, and I devoured it. I had read some articles about WeWork before, knew the general shape of the story. And I felt like the Wondery podcast provided just this excellent overview of what, you know, ultimately the series was and and, and the story. And Drew's one of my best friends. And we've been trying to find something to do together for uh, for quite some time. And, you know, as we started talking about it, I shared it with him we both gravitated towards the same things. And, you know, I think we're both big fans of, uh, you know, business stories and rise and fall stories. But what, what, what made this one uh, interesting and, and, uh, and specific to us was this love story at the center of it. And to, so to tell a business story and the kind of the formation of a company and watch its rise and its eventual fall through the prism of this couple was incredibly exciting scary and challenging um but that was the thing that kind of enticed us to kind of pursue it as a series so i, I like that a lot and you mentioned like the rise and fall stories i love that that format too i mean like i think i, I forget one i've interviewed somebody from the show i think maybe your editor and we were talking about like wolf of wall street as a comp and yeah. you know like all these great rise and fall stories but like you said this one it feels so different because you have their really their their relationship at the core is a lot different than I think in those other kind of movies, which I absolutely love. So I guess for you guys, like, you know, can you talk about creating that relationship and why I, I just found that so fascinating watching the show, because again, I think there's a version of this where you could have really demonized Adam and Rebecca and the show does not do that at all to me. And I found that really, really compelling. And I guess, can you guys talk about like kind of crafting that relationship and making sure that was always the forefront, even while you're telling the business story? Yeah, certainly. So I guess there's two parts to that question right now. And the first part is people have asked us like, oh, why the decision to tell the story this way or why focus on this love story? And really, it didn't seem like much of a decision at all. As we did more and more research and as we listened to Adam and Rebecca in their own words talk about the genesis of this company, it, the, the love story and the business story were inextricably linked right? I mean, you can, it's interesting, at the very end of our series, we have a live clip, we have a clip of, uh, of Adam and Rebecca, and Adam in 30 seconds essentially tells the story of WeWork, and it's, he basically cre credits it all to Rebecca. So it really was less of a, like, uh, dramatic contrivance than it was us saying, yes, there's this typical, messianic founder kind of myth that everyone likes to buy into. Usually it's a man, right? Usually it's this, you know, singular, you know, man with a vision who builds a company, but that is often not really how these companies rise. And in this case, it certainly wasn't the case that it was the alchemy of these two very strange, unusual people that led to WeWork. So that's the, the first part of your question. The second part, um, and Lee and I have talked about this, we discussed this quite a bit, we, we felt it was our job as writers to understand these two people as best we could, right? And to really try to almost craft psychological profiles of the two of them. And then from that reverse engineer characters through which we could tell this story. And you can't do that. You can't really take a deep dive into someone's life without developing empathy. And so for Lee and I as writers, for Jared and Anne, as performers, all of us invested so much time trying to understand them that none of us had any interest in vilifying them or creating caricatures. So I think the show that resulted, I feel like it surprised some people because people kind of expect a takedown. They just want to see the like, you know, they want the, the, the joy of the rise and then the schadenfreude of the fall and like you're conditioned to want that like, yeah, like kind of like raise the pitchforks and torches kind of thing at the end. But hopefully we've created something that's a little more complex than that. So there's some of that, but it's not, that's not the whole picture. Right. I do think that nuance is really one of the things I 
greatly enjoyed about this show, but I feel like it is unique in the landscape because a lot of times people don't want nuance with their characters, right? They want to be told that these are bad people and that we should not like them. So were you guys, I guess, were you nervous or not nervous, but like, how, what were you, what were you expecting the response to be? Because I mean, I think a lot of times now, like depiction is endorsement, right? So like, or people think that, so like this show doesn't do that, which I really appreciate it. So I guess, how did you guys kind of like weigh that kind of throwing it out, like releasing the show in this particular time, I think is really fascinating. Well, you know, one of the, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, I, I found is that, you know, when we were writing, we were like, oh, you know, we talked a lot about the social network, we talked a lot, a lot about the big short, we talked about, um, you know, mo movies like that and, and, and succession even. Um, and then people would say, um, oh, I felt, I felt like there were shades of marriage story. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so to kind of take, take something like marriage story and combine it with the social network I thought was very was very interesting you know you know as Drew said I mean these these rise and fall stories were, were they're very familiar to us and you know we almost know the rhythms of it and you know at one point kind of in our earliest development of the show we start we were talking about bubbles and 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 you know why people kind of believe in these messianic figures and we started in tulip mania in Holland and then and it was gonna be the same actor imagine Jared playing a blomished in, in uh, you know, like a tulip auction and then cutting to, um, to gold processing in, in, in California to, you know, to the dot-com bubble to 2008 and, and then ultimately landing with, you know, Adam Newman, but all played, played for the same person. And, you know, I, I think in the development of it, we really, we wanted to ground it much more than that. But, but the point is that the, the, the kind of the rhythms of these stories are familiar to the audience. And I think that's something there's something comforting and exciting about it, but it's really when you kind of dig into the specificity and you see these two people, you know, these two narcissists basically kind of like providing the oxygen for one another to rise to levels that on their own, they never would have um, is, is a fat is fascinating to us. Yeah. yeah. Well, Chris, the one thing I would add is like, it's just in terms of, what will people think? Were people think we were too easy on them? Would people think we were too hard on them? We really, we actually didn't think about the audience much at all. We, we, we actually focused all of our energy on what feels kind of true to us, right? Like what is like, we, we, and so we thought a lot about these are two real human beings and we're telling their story. We're also telling the story of all the employees there really it was balancing those two interests, the interests of the two human beings that we're creating a show out of and the people that in some cases really, um, you know, uh, were affected by the things that they did. So that was kind of really the balancing act. And then you hope people like what you did. The, the fact that we have gotten such wildly different reactions. Some people are say, oh my God, I came away and I actually liked them or I identified with them. And some people say, oh my God, those are the worst people I've ever seen. I hope they burn in hell. But we actually take that as a compliment, right? That that's kind of what we were hoping, that you'd make your own conclusion. Yeah, and I think I think it really it does. And, and I like, uh, yeah, I like what you're saying. I think the way you guys show the, the staffers and the effect that it has on them, certainly in like the penultimate episode with, I forget the, the character and the actress's name, I apologize, but she's like buying her $20,000 oh, yeah. bag or whatever, right? And uh, that scene is really heartbreaking because you know she's screwed and it's just like, oh man. And it, this is like really, really plays incredibly well. We're talking about obviously like Adam and Rebecca and having these incredible characters. You have two of the best actors, in my opinion, like going and Jared Leto and Anne Hathaway. I just, it's a great mix. It's an unexpected mix because I think they both have certainly different approaches to the craft. Uh, can you talk about like working with them to get these characters to where they are? Because again, I think it's especially for, I mean, both of them are incredible, but for Jared too, I think if there's a lot of, uh, he has a great, uh, like a light touch to it, I think at times. And like, he's very funny and engaging and really kind of like plays that part of Adam incredibly well. And it's for me, certainly not something we've seen him do a lot recently. And so I guess, can you talk a little about like working with them to get these performances just right? Drew, do you want to take it? You want me to take it? Sure. Uh, yeah. Why don't, you, why don't you jump in? And I'll, I can, yeah. I can. You know, I, I think from, from the earliest conversations that we had with both of them, it was incredibly important. Uh, I mean, they are very research oriented, um, you know, like us. And Jared, you know, had, it turns out he had actually spoken to Adam. We found out, we only found that out after we had finished the show. Um, but he he's very steeped in in um, in Silicon Valley and in tech culture and investors. And 
and that was great and incredibly useful for the show and informative, but ultimately what they both wanted more than anything, they wanted to understand who these people were and it was digging beneath the surface and talking about them in, in ways that were, you know, you want to root for them, you want to be frustrated by them, you want to shake them at times. And they never wanted, none of us ever wanted the characters to be the butt of the joke. Everything, all the comedy that's in the show is in service of character, it's in service of story. It was never like, oh, look how silly they are. It was, these are people that are outsized and, you know, and take swings. But that was, that was something that was very key. And, and, and with Annie, the, the earliest conversations, she said something that, uh, that, you know, that in our first conversation that rocked me to my core, which was first, she complimented us and said how, you know, uh, how great the writing was and propulsive and, you know, what a great character Adam was. And I was feeling very good about myself. And I think Drew was feeling the same. And then she said, but one thing, you haven't cracked Rebecca yet. And as a writer on deadline, there's no greater pit in your stomach. Also, knowing that the person that you have been thinking about for this role for months and months has basically said, I'm not doing this part. It was incredibly dispiriting. But from that conversation really developed with both of them a collaboration. And we were able to really kind of dig beneath the surface and talk about what makes both characters tick. And so much of that it informed what we had written up until that point and what the season, how the season progressed. The, the one thing I'll add to that is here's, the, here's a two word answer to that, to your question. And that is all in. These are two people that like, I think generally in their lives, they're all in, but they were just all into these roles in a way that was, it was kind of breathtaking. You know, as Lee said, from research to Annie was studying for hours uh, to be a, you know, you know, yoga, to be a yoga instructor. And, you know, it's just, and Jared's sort of immersion in the accent, it was like, it was just utter dedication for, and again, this is not a movie, this is a limited series. So for months and months and months and months. And, and, and with both yeah. of them, it was, you know, um, wardrobe and what toys do the kids have that they're playing with? And, you know, what does, what type of pen does Rebecca have in her office? And, you know, um, Annie was so involved in the, the creation of We Grow, you know, ironically, just as Rebecca was involved in the building of this, you know, this, this, this school, Anne Hathaway was incredibly involved and had exhaustive conversations with me and Drew and our director and our production designer so that everything in that school, which was an incredible set, was, there was not a stone left unturned. Yeah, that's amazing. And you you both mentioned something there that I was like, again, obviously it's a limited series and you've been talking about films and stuff that like kind of you have thought about or and stuff and certainly watching it, I, I felt the same way, but I think like the production value on this is so high. And obviously you have two Oscar, Oscar winning actors here. It does feel like, just such a it's just like such a, a great production I guess and I guess can you talk about like did you guys try to like I mean did you treat it as like a, a, a film like a long film like how did you guys think about it when you're like because like I said like you know there's it doesn't feel like you cut any corners to be honest right like watching it I'm like wow this is like I feel like I'm watching a big production like a movie you know like basically and I think that's really fascinating especially and again not to be smirched like other shows or anything like that but I just felt like this is like really high high touch television, let's say, or limited series as it were. I guess, can you talk about, did you guys approach it as like that kind of thing or did you approach it as like a TV series that you just had a lot of resources for, I guess? Uh, you know, it's, it's, I guess it was a combination of two things. One was, um, fortunately we had Apple backing us, which is not a, not a bad company to be <laughs> the bill. Sure. Uh, that's, that's so, um, and, and I will say about them, we turned our pilot and uh, story format, story Bible, whatever you want to call it, in on a Friday. By Monday, they had greenlit us to series. And that was before we had Jared and Annie. And, and so there was just absolute conviction and belief about the show from the get-go. So that is tremendously helpful, which you don't always get. And then the second thing is, um, that said, it is a TV show. It's not a movie. And I've worked for 16 years exclusively on the film side. And even a kind of deluxe production like this is, it can't compare to a movie budget. It just can't. It's just a different, the economics are different. So 
we had budgets and we and they were and they were absolutely more than reasonable but still you know they had their limits so our department heads truly worked miracles i mean amy williams our production designer you can't imagine the cost and difficulty of building that we work set and that and once you do that and it, it, it had its own air conditioning system. I mean, it was truly, it was, if you felt like you were walking into a working structure, like an actual WeWork, but there are costs to that. So then there wasn't as much to do some of the other things and the magic they worked in being resourceful was, you know, it's, I want to both credit Apple for how, how absolutely, you know, unequivocally they backed us, but also the department heads really worked some true magic. The other thing I would add is uh, John John Ruckel and Glenn Ficarra directed the first three episodes and really set it. They're they're film directors mm -hmm. and they had they set the tone on the set and also how filmic the show would look. And when I saw the first cut of for the first episode we shot, ironically, was the third one at summer camp. I was blown away. I I, I felt I felt like I was watching a movie and they created so much scope and so much breath, but also so much tenderness. And so when you have those two things combined, where you have the kind of the scale that you see in, you know, it, it, uh, on a movie budget, and they did it on a TV budget, and then also having Jared and Annie as they're kind of, you know, first coming into these characters, and there are so many moments of vulnerability that, that, that Annie had to display in that episode in relationship with her father and all these, you know, this backstory and the complications in her marriage. On, on for both of them it was it was so fascinating to kind of see it come alive and we as drew said i mean to a department we we had best in show i mean uh jen malone who was our music supervisor uh did euphoria which you know is incredible and, and you know has won emmys and every every person involved we really felt like some of it was by accident you know amy williams i'd worked with in the past uh, but a lot of the people were first you know our first time collaborators with that we'll, we'll continue working to, uh, with for years to come it's amazing. Lee said, yeah. Lee said best in show. I think he meant best in class. We don't want to compare Jen to the winner of a dog, <laughs> of a dog show. <laughs> yes. yes. I, 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 knew, I knew what he meant. Uh, that's, that's very funny. I, but I, yeah. 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 I, I wanted you, uh, we have to wrap up here shortly, but I wanted to go back to one thing Lee, you were saying earlier about like having Annie be, Anne Hathaway be like, oh, uh, you didn't crack Rebecca yet. What was it that cracked Rebecca for her, I guess? Or what was, was there a specific moment where you guys felt like, where she was like, yes, this is, this is the character, I guess. Yeah. It's what, what we all kind of came to um, was this notion of someone who sort of throws themselves from identity to identity, right? Like this sort of searcher that says, I'm a yoga instructor. No, I'm an actor. No, I'm a marketing, you know, officer. No, I'm actually a co. And just the 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 kind of dangerous psychological high wire act that that sort of that is behind throwing yourself into these identities because when they don't work, where does that leave you? So we felt like there was th that that was really the case with the real Rebecca, and it really Annie helped us bring that to the fore. And the thing the thing I would add with it too is that. Um... And what we talked about with her is she's not casual about it. I mean, I think we know people in our lives. I think everyone knows someone who is a little bit of a drifter and they kind of try this and they try this out. We believe that Rebecca was someone that with all of these different steps, there's nothing casual about it. She is taking all of the acting classes. She is, you know, she is going to India to, to study enlightenment. She is, you know, she is becoming a practicing yogi. Like all of those things take time and effort um and passion it's not simply oh I'm, i've decided to be a yoga instructor and i take a class once a week and so that was something that that kind of passion and intention was something that uh really came through yeah i, I love this show so much we probably talk about it for much longer but we do have to wrap up here uh drew Cavella and lee eisenberg creators of we crashed all the episodes are streaming on apple tv plus i suggest watching them because they're great thank you guys for doing this i appreciate thank it thank you so much chris appreciate it